welcome back thank you dear listeners and uh, those who have been following this discussion on the ark of the covenant over the so far what we have talked about is the story as it was told in the old testament and now we are talking about the quranic verses of chapter 2 246 to 248 about the events that led to the formation of the ark as well as like the events that were unfolding at that time with regards to Saul and the king, King David. So when we think about all of those events, there was a question that came up. Why were the people of the time against Saul when he was appointed the king? And this is an interesting example and a question that we need to address more. So according to this narration that we are reading, from Abu Jafar alayhi salam that it says that they were and the prophethood among the children of Israel used to be in one household. The children of Israel, why is that name used? Because Israel was the name of Jacob, another name of Jacob. So all the 12 children that Jacob had were the children, were called the children of Israel. Those became the 12 tribes. Similarly, it is interesting that the number 12 is so profound and so prevalent in the religions that it was the 12 tribes, 12 disciples, and the 12 successors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. To be, uh, so, uh, the prophethood among the children of Israel used to be in one household. So that's how it was, that there was a single household where the prophethood was concentrated while the kingdom and the authority used to be in another so there was a clear demarcation by god that the prophethood will stay in one the uh, other house would have the kingship allah did not gather together for them the prophethood and the kingdom in one household and this particular example is something that muslims used to argue that prophet's household will not have both the kingship and the rulership of this world as well as the the successorship in terms of the uh, the spiritual world which is totally against the aspect of the quran where allah says that god can change and put things where he feels right so with that this is an example where Allah decided to change the order in which he used to do things. That they said to their prophet, raise for us a king. We would fight in the way of Allah. So their prophet said to them, may it not be that you would not fight if fighting is ordained for you. They said, and what reason do we have that we would not fight in the way of Allah and we have indeed been compelled to abandon our homes and our children. The same concept that we talked about what happened to them when they were attacked by the army of Goliath and Goliath was actually able to displace these people. So they were frustrated, they wanted a king and it was Allah uh, then and it was as Allah has said but when fighting was ordained for them they turned back except a few of them and Allah knows the unjust so their prophet said to them in 247 surely Allah has raised Talud to be a king over you so they were angered from that now think about this they were asking for a king after some time their king was appointed but they were angered by that concept how can he hold kingship over us while we have greater right to kingship now they are they're highlighting the right over kingship and he has not been granted an abundance of wealth so their category of being appointed to kingship was wealth so they were thinking from a wealth like worldly perspective what will drive the kingship they were not interested in the total submission aspect they were not interested in any other aspect so let's look at that further and why and now this is this is an important point for people who do not understand this point that if you read this particular verse 
and you want to make an interpretation from your own self you will never have an idea why were they so upset about the right what is the significance of this concept of right how are they judging the right that they have a higher right to this kingship than anyone else this can only come from a true source true interpretation of the quran that can only come from the true successors of the prophet who are the custodians of the quran who the prophet himself said are the custodians of the quran so that's where it says and the prophethood used to be so Hazrat Abu Jafar is saying the prophet used to be among the children of Awe and the kingdom among the children of Yusuf. So Joseph used to have the kingdom and his children used to have the kingdom while the uh, children of uh, Awe, uh, also probably called Levi in Hebrew, were those who had the uh, the prophethood and Thaluth was from the children of Benjamin. So Benjamin was another brother of Yusuf and he was the actual uh, Thaluth was from his family. So they were upset neither being from the house of the prophethood nor from the house of the kingship. So the people who were from the house of the prophethood and from the house of the kingship, they were more interested in their own uh, positioning. So he said to them, the, the Prophet, Surely Allah has chosen him in preference to you and he has increased him abundantly in knowledge and physique and Allah grants his kingdom to whom he so desires. To Allah is ample giving and knowing. Now again, all of these things, all of these verses, even though the, Christ, uh, the Jews are being told by their Prophet, they're already all of these references are to Allah which makes a very interesting point that the God of Jews is the God of most Muslims is the God of Christians there is only one God so coming back to and he had a well-built physique and was brave and strong so again the point that I mentioned earlier that with physique it meant he was brave and strong and was their most knowledgeable one, except that he was poor. So this was an interesting dynamic that he was poor, but he had all the other attributes. Yes, he was not from the family as well, but the people of the family of those who were given kingship in the past, they were thinking, what does that mean? Um, so then we, uh, then it continues. So they refused due to his poverty. So they said, he has not been given an abundance of wealth. And their prophet said in 248, and their prophet said to them, the sign of his kingdom is that there will come to you the chest in which there is tranquility from your Lord and the remnants of what the children of Musa, Moses and the children of Aaron have left behind the angels carrying it so just to recap the discussion that we have been having uh, so far we're trying to do uh, a few few things before in order to understand this particular verse what we're trying to accomplish is we are trying to interconnect or understand three different topics in relationship to the historical events so that we can understand the present events. The three different topics are what is the significance of the red heifers? Are they mentioned in the Quran? Are they mentioned in the Old Testament? And their significance in relationship to the temples? What are the temples? Which temples were built? And then the third one is this Ark of the Covenant uh, topic because it is so important in relationship to what was in that ark, what was the significance of that ark, and how all of this information is mentioned in, uh, how is it is it presented in Old Testament versus the Quran. So we have reached this point where the prophet was a point, the prophet was asked to send a king. So why were the prophet was asked to send a king the people were upset by Saul being selected as the king because he did not have worldly wealth 
and not from the families the families of prophethood or the families of kingship he was strong in uh, strength and bravery plus knowledge and intellect so these were the key things that he had but they did not think of these things the the bravery and intellect as being the key drivers as a result they were upset with the choice of Paul Talud as the king for uh, the people of Israel now the next and and also we talked about how and why the covenant or the ark of the covenant was taken by the the people of Goliath how it came back so up to this point we've reached a point where now people are asking for signs and they're asking for like we need a proof we need proof that go uh, that uh, Talut Saul is is real so then comes the ark again so so far the ark was lost and then now the ark comes back into the picture I'll pause over here for any questions and then we'll continue into uh, how it came back into picture and then continue to go into the explanation of these verses from the Quran.